First of all, I want to say good evening, everybody. Um, Your Royal Highness, Crown Princess Victoria, uh, thank you again. Uh, Your Excellencies, our distinguished contestants from all over the world, uh, and our honored guest. On behalf of the nearly 17,000 Xylem colleagues around the world, it is my honor uh, to be with you here tonight. We are so proud to be a founding sponsor of the Stockholm Junior Water Prize event 23 years ago. Uh, And I must say, And I must say that uh, this is absolutely my favorite day of the year. Uh, And as I'm sure you walked walked around and saw the terrific work these students are doing, you understand why that a leader of a water technology company, it could not be a better day than this day of the year. Again, I want to recognize, uh, Your Highness, the tremendous support and patronage that you continue to give to this great event. Uh, Without you, it it wouldn't be possible in terms of what we do. So thank you very much. I also want to thank the Stockholm International Water Institute, uh, the judges that were involved in making these very difficult uh, decisions, and our national organizers for making this such a terrific event uh, each and every year. So thank you to all of you. So Tilda, I'm going to get right to it. Where did she go? There she is. Okay. (laughs) So, yes, uh, as a young boy growing up in a small town of Evansville, Indiana, in the Midwest, on the Ohio River, water was definitely very much a conversation in my youth. Uh, The reality is that exactly 50 years ago, in the state next door of Ohio, the Cuyahoga River became so damaged from industrial pollution that it caught on fire. Many people don't realize it was the 13th time it had caught on fire. My good friend George Hawkins, who is a thought leader in water and the former head of DC Water, is here tonight in the crowd. He grew up in Ohio, and he remembers very clearly going to visit the river around that time, standing on the bank of the river, and being able to see the filth from the pollution. There were, he would say, there were so many colors swirling around in it that it actually looked like a finger painting. Is that right, George? So, you know, at the end of the day, it's an image that was burned into George's mind at a very young age. In fact, the fire became front page news across the country and the world and was a major factor in starting the environmental movement in the U.S. 50 years ago this year. It was truly a turning point. One state over in Indiana, I witnessed the same terrible impact of industrial pollution along the mighty Ohio River. And my hometown of Newburgh, Indiana was located right on its bank. And yet, while so many advances have been made around the world since that time, water challenges continue to escalate and intensify by the year. People didn't pay enough attention then. We didn't take action. We didn't solve the problem. The bottom line is we don't have another 50 years to waste in solving these issues. As many of you know, by 2025, it's estimated that more than 1.8 billion people will be living in areas of water scarcity around the world. In fact, just this month, a new report came out finding that one quarter of the people on the planet, 25% of the people on the planet right now, are facing extremely high water stress. It's happening right now, today. It's not 20 years from now, it's not 50 years from now, it's right here, right now. But we cannot look the other way, and we will not look the other way 50 years onward. We're not gonna focus on fixing one river in one country while the rest of the planet suffers. We're not gonna focus on certain communities that struggle to deal with water scarcity and affordability while other lives are devastated by water-related disease and severe weather from climate change. And while in some areas of the world, yes, lakes and rivers still burn to this day. So once again, we are at a turning point. But this time, we have to do more and we will do more. The amazing news is that the technologies exist and the passion exists and we are at a turning point. This news is that we can, we are, and we will make a difference this time. The fact is, 
the world is far closer to solving our major challenges today than we've ever been. Digital technologies, which have already revolutionized other industries, are now transforming water, dramatically reducing pollution and water loss, and helping cities and towns around the world become more resilient to climate change. We need the world to embrace the power of data so we can help more communities and more people become water secure. Now, I believe the only way that we can do this is by mobilizing our youth right here and all of your friends and all of your loved ones around you that you inspire by being here in Stockholm based upon your passion for what you're doing. You're digital natives. You grew up with technology. You understand the possibilities of data and you're willing to push boundaries. You're willing to seize its potential to change the world. But we and I need you to create a mind shift in our society. The good news is, I know you will. I met you all today. I spent time with you. You have talent, you have passion, and you understand the connection between technology, sustainability, and social consciousness. You've seen the images and the news in the front lines, and for some of you, you've witnessed it firsthand in your daily lives. People struggling to afford water for their basic needs. Women and children walking every day hours in dangerous conditions to gather it and communities and lives devastated by flooding and storms. But you can and you will change this. So I wanna ask you a question tonight and I want you to think about what you think the world will be like when you're my age. Now that might seem a long, long time from now. But I can assure you, when you're passionate about what you do and everybody in this room is, days become weeks Weeks become months, months become years, years become decades, and next thing you know, you're my age. <laughs> it happens faster than you think, and you get older, it goes faster, I can assure you. So when you're in midlife, in my age, and someone asks you, what was water like when you were growing up? I want you to have a very different answer. I want you to be able to say, hey, when I was young, water challenges were putting the very future of humanity at risk. But my generation did something about it and took it on as a mission. We helped revolutionize water technology. We convinced more communities to embrace it. We raised global awareness and got more people to care. We created, we created a paradigm shift and delivered the change our planet desperately needed. One of tonight's finalists, Dieterul Islam from Bangladesh. He's embarrassed right now that I'm calling him out. He said, quote, to protect our Earth, we need to address environmental issues through a social movement, education, advocacy, and green technology. To that I say, go for it. Okay. I would say to all of you, Go out and invent that new technology. Go build that movement, both in technology and political. And I can assure you that we as Xylem and all of our partners in this room and partners around the world, we're going to be right there with you, supporting you and cheering you on along the way. At Xylem, we like to say the world now has the opportunity of a lifetime to solve the great water challenges facing the planet. So to the, class, to the class of 2019, Stockholm Junior Water Prize finalist, my words to you are go out and seize it. Congratulations. You're all winners. Thank you.